Tenakoto Katoa, Chancellor, Vice Chancellor, members of the University Council, my colleagues, and to the proud families and friends, and to you. For most people, their final year at university is the most challenging one. But for you, well, it was the year that the world stood still, and it will be remembered in history as the year of COVID-19. You have graduated during unprecedented global pandemic. It was caused by a virus that jumped from wildlife into humans and quickly swept the world. It caused the world to lock down. It led to healthcare systems being overrun and it has caused devastatingly high rates of mortality and morbidity. But in New Zealand, we took a different path. We were told to stay home to save lives and that's what we did. And in doing so has meant that we can be here today to celebrate together. We can be here in 3D when most of the rest of the world faces record numbers of reported cases and deaths and even more inevitable lockdowns. So let us focus on what can become of our experiences through this extraordinary year in history. Let us focus or try hard to find the silver linings. I too am part of a cohort that graduated during a notable year in history. That was a global financial crisis, but that seems a bit insignificant in comparison. But nevertheless, the post-university um, paths were somewhat uncertain back then. And for me, while, while navigating the unknown, I had absolutely no idea what I wanted to do. As a fresh young graduate, I was eager for adventure. So I decided to leave my home, small, small hometown in Scotland and move to the furthest away place possible, Dunedin. I also decided it was gonna be much easier to stay at university rather than leave and face reality. So I undertook a PhD here at Otago. I often think back to that time that in circumstances were different, easier perhaps, maybe I wouldn't have had a strong desire to escape and I wouldn't have come to this extraordinary place on earth that I call home. And I wouldn't have met my Kiwi husband or had our Kiwi daughter. And I wouldn't have met those lifelong friendships that, um, while flatting as a student, when it was colder inside than out. And I wouldn't have had that vital mentorship that I experienced here at Otago. I wouldn't have gained the qualifications that allowed me to take up research positions around the world, first in New York and then in Australia, working with world-class researchers at the forefront of my field. And I wouldn't have gained those invaluable experiences that would eventually allow me to find a path to come back here to the University of Otago. And I'm really just at the beginning of my research journey. My research interest lies in understanding how viruses evolve. Viruses are perhaps the best exemplars of evolution by natural selection, where their evolutionary processes can often be so rapid they can be seen in real time. Darwin would have loved viruses. I study virus evolution on both the macroevolutionary scale, where viruses and their hosts have co-evolved for hundreds of millions of years, and at the microevolutionary scale, where a seemingly novel virus jumps a species barrier and emerges in a new host, and how it might then evolve where it spreads in populations through space and time. So in late 2019, when we were making plans to move back to Otago, I had a fleeting moment of panic about what I should work on next. Little did I know about the next few years we were all about to experience. Looking at the pandemic through a lens of an evolutionary biologist allowed me and my colleagues to see the value in sequencing the genomes of the virus to better inform our response to COVID-19. I think it's fair to say that genome, genomics has played a starring role in New Zealand's response. And everyone in New Zealand now, is, now knows the term genomic sequencing. But when I was sitting where you are now, I can tell you I didn't have a clue what I was going to do. I didn't know that I would be working at the forefront of the response to a global pandemic, but I could see where I could add some value. This year, we will remember the lockdowns, the disruption, the fear, and the sickness. But if we search for those silver linings, most of all, there is an incredible transformation in the enthusiasm for science. We are just 16 months into the worst global pandemic in 100 years, but science has enabled over a million coronavirus genomes to be sequenced and shared to track new variants in real time. Science has informed the development of cutting edge vaccine technologies, and science has aided mathematical models to understand the virus's trajectory that informed our elimination strategy in the first place. In short, and I hate to quote Matt Damon, but we've science the shit out of it. Some 20 years from now, when you're running your world-class scientific research institutes or you're the CEOs of the world-leading companies, you will tell your students and your employees how you graduated during the pandemic. 
And the resilience that you learn from this experience is a secret to your success. You have shown how to overcome uncertainty. And because of this, you'll be a better scientist than those who have come before. The pandemic has changed the world, but you who graduated during this time in history are the ones who are best equipped to lead us into this change. You have the opportunity to lead us into the new post-pandemic age. So as variants and vaccines dominate our lives this year, I urge you to use your education and see where you can add some value. You don't have to know yet what you will do or where you will do it or how you will do it. Just know that as you navigate this uncertain time, opportunities exist for you that you probably don't even know about yet, but you can seek them out and you can remake this world. Congratulations and good luck.